exactly as I prayed for it to be is exactly what happened. And my doctor was like, bro, what did you do? <laughs> headquarters revolution gang if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution so guys it's actually midnight right now I'm recording this video literally in the middle of the night but let me tell you guys what happened so what had happened was ne? this video obviously is a praise to God video is a testimony video right so before I record the video I decide let me play some worship music to get me in the spirit you know what I'm saying like Holy Spirit take over Holy Spirit activate Holy Spirit activate activate but then the, the music, the spirit came, the music hit. And instead of me being like, yes, now I'm ready to speak in tongues. Now I'm going to put on those pasta shoes, those white ones, and I'm going to preach to the babies. Instead of that being like, you know, what happened? What happened is actually now I feel sad. And I don't feel sad like bad sad, like oh negative sad. I feel sad because God is so good that I'm sad. Does that make sense? Like God is so good that I'm overwhelmed. Maybe that's, let me use a better choice of word, words. God is so good that I'm overwhelmed and this feeling of being overwhelmed it makes me feel like oh I'm sad. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just like... <laughs> Hello to the babies. Hi guys. Today I want to share my testimony with you. Before I get into that, let me introduce myself to the babies who are new. My name is Benita Danielle. I am a South African currently living in America. A big part of me that drives my life is my faith. I am Christian. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross for the remission of sin, that I may be forgiven, that I may be reunited with my Father in heaven. I am a Christian. I am 116, unashamed. I am living for the Lord. I am living for the Lord. Let's get into this video. So, in 2020, the panny hit, um, the panoramic. So, 2020, the pandemic hit and I was in America. I was unable to go home because, well, the borders were closed, the world was on fire and we were in hell, to put it lightly. And so, I couldn't go home. My whole family's in South Africa. I have no family here. So, when COVID hit, I had to stay. First of all, I had to figure out where am I going to stay and then by God's grace, I was able to stay on campus. When I stayed on campus, I think much like all of us really, uh, my, my eating habits were not healthy, you know, I was stress eating, I was afraid and like, you know, when, when you want quote unquote comfort, you go to food. So I ended up doing that and I was drinking a lot of soda, like I think I was drinking soda every day, sometimes like twice a day, um, drinking minimal water, not exercising. Anyway, so I went to the doctor and the doctor was like, okay, you're pre-diabetic, but it's not bad, like you've just entered pre-diabetic zones your a1c which i don't know what that stands for a normal a1c is below 5.7 percent if you are between 5.7 to 6.4 you have pre-diabetes and if you are 6.5 or more you now have diabetes so when i went to the doctor in 2020 i had just gotten to 5.7 so i had just entered the pre-diabetic zone and so she told me that and i was like ah! i said oh lord jesus it's a fire oh my gosh that's so scary because i have a history of uh, diabetes in my family and you know my doctor said she actually said that when they, they ask you if you have a history not only because of genetics right but also sometimes it's the fact that if your parents have diabetes it's because of their eating habits and so you find that because you grow up in the home with your parents you do, you have their same eating habits and so you end up with diabetes not because not necessarily because of your genes which yeah sure may have an effect but also because of the learned eating habits i thought that was so interesting when she told me that honestly it shook me and i was like oh my gosh i know i have a history of it and I do not want to live my life on medication. That's one of my biggest things. I'm not a fan of medication. Honestly, I don't trust Big Pharma. A shout out to doctors and everything, but like, look man, I'm just not that trusting of the system and I think it's pretty understandable why we live in a capitalist society that puts profits over people. I mean, Big Pharma and whatnot, they 
you know they, they 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 get money from us being sick ultimately you know so look I just try not to be on medication and so when that hit me it scared me because I was like I don't want to live my life on medication I don't want to live my life having to eat a certain way you get me so I got the diagnosis then and honestly it shook me but I didn't take it seriously I didn't stop soda I didn't like I think also because the way my doctor was like yeah you know you just entered it like just cut down a little bit you should be fine so it shook me but ah, not enough hey fast forward to 2022 um, I there was a week in my life I noticed that when I don't eat right and this was not intentional like if I just eat late I started to feel a little shaky a little you know light hit a little like and I've seen I'm this I have family members who have diabetes and I know that if they don't eat they start to get a little shaky they start to get a little lightheaded like you know what I mean like I've seen the things that the reaction I've seen them have I was starting to have and that's when for me things hit the highest level of oh my god in my head I was like this is it like you know I, 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 I have it and then they're gonna amputate my foot and like you know like it's finished and I know that was a bit dramatic mind you I'm a dramatic person I am I know myself okay so when things happen I am just I'm one of those people where like if danger is approaching me I'm gonna scream well in advance and I mean like this is me this is danger let's say danger is over there and I'm over here I will start screaming when danger is here I won't wait for it to come here no 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 I'm when it's over there over here I'll be like police help police help police help help <laughs> So, um, yeah, anyway, so I'm a dramatic person is what I'm trying to say with that. But it really shook me. I booked a doctor's appointment and to see like where my, my sugar is. So I went to the doctor on the 10th of December, 2021. And my doctor told me that you are literally a second away from diabetes. Like you are heavily pre-diabetic and literally you are going to tip the scale soon. And that, that was, that was the worst news. Let me talk about a bit about how I was feeling and I'm so sorry if I don't, actually no, I'm, I'm telling the truth here. So I, I, I can't be what you want me to be. I'm just being honest. Um, but yeah, so when I got the news, I was terrified. I was terrified. It was such a big wake up call for me. I was like, Benita, this is pathetic and that takes me to my next point is I felt ashamed I felt like you are pre-diabetic about to be diabetic because you don't take care of yourself because you ate unhealthy you didn't work out you drank too much soda you failed the one thing you had to do which is take care of yourself you failed you're a failure you're a loser like that all those things were coming into my into my head and it didn't even just end with you know being pre-diabetic it was just like in your life in general like you suck you're lame you're a loser like you know what I mean and um, that's something that I had to first of all rebuke and reject and say devil you're a liar I'm not who you say I am I am who I am says I am I am who Yahweh says I am I am who God says I am but I also want us to be realistic to be aware of the truth is different to believing the truth or living in the truth so for instance you know that you are you you know as a Christian you know very well you are who God says you are but there are times where th thoughts creep in and things happen and you forget that God said that you are the chosen generation the head and not the tail above and not beneath more than a conqueror the, ro the royal priesthood you forget that that's what God said to you and sometimes you're like am I lame do I suck? Am I a loser? If we're being realistic about the human flaws and human error and human emotion, there are times where you forget that truth. And so for me, I, in that moment, that truth, while I was aware of it, it's like I was struggling to believe it, you know? And I had a lot of shame onto me. So even when I prayed about it, when I got the diagnosis and I wanted to pray, I felt even too ashamed to pray. I was like, what are you going to do? Go to God and be like, listen, I don't take care of myself. Help me. You know? 
and that that's what that thought was like but yes that's exactly what you do that's exactly what you do the devil wants to make you think that there's shame in going to God and saying I am weak I have failed I have struggled but that's exactly what you do because his strength is made perfect in your weakness. He is the pillar that holds your life. He is your strength. You get me? Meaning, he's not expecting you to be perfect and standing up and ready to bamba and chill with the big boys all the time. He wants you to come. No matter what sin you've done, he wants you to come and say, Yo, yeah, I know, hey? Yeah, I know, this time, God, yeah, I did a thing. That's exactly what God wants. And he's gonna welcome you and he's gonna help you. I got the diagnosis and I did this thing where like when I got the diagnosis, I went super drastic with it, right? I just, I, I, I just, I cut out sugar, I cut out carbs, I cut like immediately, like the next day, it's exactly what I did. I only ate vegetables um, and I tried to do the intermittent fasting, which is like, I, and, and look, look man, I want to say this in this video. I'm not giving anybody medical advice here, okay? And if you want to know about intermittent fasting, watch a video, a different video, not this video, where there are people who explain it. But I watched videos, I tried intermittent fasting where like, you don't eat for a certain time, then you have an eating window, then you don't eat, and in the eating window, you need to eat so much and whatever. I did all that and I was miserable. I mean, like, and I'm one of those people where when I'm not okay, man, you see it, which is so bad. I feel like I need to get better at like not being like that. But it's like the color left my body. You know what I'm saying? I was pale. In fact, if you looked at me, you would think I'm a white woman because like I was so unhappy, all the color left my body, all the melanin <laughs> left my body. So, um, but yeah, so I I did that and, and it didn't, it didn't work for me because it wasn't sincere. It was driven by hate, hatred for self, hatred for my situation. It was driven by shame and so it didn't help. And this is what I did. I got down to my knees one time and I cried. And I mean, I wept. And I mean like. <laughs> the way I cried, it was coming from the very bottom. I don't even know what well I can describe, but the bottom, 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 bottom. The tears were coming from, from my toes all the way up, 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 up to my head, up to the top, up. To, like I, I wept. Didn't even cry. I wept. And I said, God, I'm scared. And I said that I acknowledge the fact that I'm here. I'm not here because of. I'm not going to call it a demonic attack right i'm not going to say um the devil has projected diabetes to me my eating habits my lifestyle led to me get becoming pre-diabetic quarter to diabetic you know and i wanted to acknowledge that what i did pray about though is to say that i'm not going to have you know there's a history and this is where faith comes in right science says that if you have a history of diabetes that apart from you know the whole eating habits thing of your parents it's in your genes and this is where faith comes in i believe this is where faith comes in where you say that okay my mom had it my dad had it my uncle had it it stops there it's not gonna come here not me not my children not my generation not my line that generational curse and i call it a curse wherever it started wherever it has been that's where it's going to end and it's not going to continue you get me so i took accountability for the fact that it's my lifestyle that got me there but the whole thing of like now every generation is like okay we have this we have that by faith i pray that that chain is broken and i know that all things are possible to god to man this is impossible but to god this is possible right so when i went to god i wept and i prayed about it and i was like i was super 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 scared after i prayed about it i said god i need you to guide me i need you to give me the strength because i don't know what to do i don't know where to go i can't do this by myself and then god laid it in my heart to do a fast so normally um at the beginning of the year my church does 21 days of fasting i think many churches do that 
but we do it in February instead of Jan. And so God laid it in my heart to do a 21 day fast. And so I was going to start the fast in January when I got back from vacation. I went on a solo trip. So when I got back from vacation, I was like, okay, I'm going to start the fast. And then I realized that no man, like when I do this 21 day fast, I'm going to end like somewhere in February, but my church would have started their 21 day fast. So I said, okay, God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this 21 day fast and I'm going to do my church's 21 day fast and I'm going to top that and I'm going to do 50 days. And when I prayed to God, I said to him, I am doing more than I'm doing more than 21, which is like the standard beginning of year fast. I'm doing more than 21. I'm doing more than 42, which is double of 21. And I said, God, as I am doing more than double, I want you to do more than double. I want to see your hand. I want to see your face. I said, God, I'm, I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to do this fast and I'm going to seek your face. And I'm not just doing this fast to pray for my health, but I'm going to pray for my life. I'm going to pray for my faith. I'm going to pray for my relationship with you. I'm going to, like, I'm going to really, yo, God, flip me from the inside out. Let's go. It's me and you now. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to do this fast. So on the 9th of January, I started my fast. And when I start a fast, if you guys want to know more about fasting, I actually did a video about it. So check out that video if you want to know a bit about how I fast and stuff. But when I started the fast, I wrote in my... <clears throat> I wrote in my prayer journal. This is my little prayer journal. It's got a little pen. I know you guys don't care, but like here it is. And I stick a little pen here and it's pink and it says, can't touch this because you can't touch my anointed. You can't touch God's anointed. You get me? So I wrote in my prayer book, the things that I'm praying for. One of the things that I wrote, I said that by the end of my fast, pre-diabetes is going to be gone and my blood sugar will be back to normal and I said and I said this in the book and I said it as I prayed I said by the end of my fast I'm going to make a doctor's appointment when I go to the doctor the doctor is going to say that my blood sugar is normal that's exactly what I said word for word and that's exactly what I've been praying for the whole time started my fast on um, January 9th. Now, when I started my fast, so I wrote I wrote down the things that I'm praying for, but I also told God that, Lord, I know that you bless the works of our hands. So I know that God is not a magician. You can't just go to God and say, you know, bless me with money or whatever, or bless me with whatever, but you are not doing the work. You get me? God blesses the works of your hands, which means that you have to put in the work, right? Even in the Bible, you see God ask people to do certain things. Like, for instance, the Israel Israelites had to sing and the walls of Jericho came down right and all I'm trying to say is that God is a miracle working God but there are certain things that you need to do that maybe you don't always understand but you're called to do that you need to do whether it's a practical thing like get a job and go to work then God will bless you with promotion right but even promotion well promotion can be divine where it's like yo it's just favor honestly like God like you're putting me in places that I I know I know I'm not qualified to be there because God qualifies the cold well but anyway that's not the point but there's miraculous promotion but there's also promotion where it's like you also need to do your part you know um, you need to have the job, but you also need to work hard. And they say you need to equip yourself for the places where God is going to take you. Because when he appoints you, which he will, are you ready to be appointed? Are you ready to be blessed? Are you ready to work hard? You get me? I'm saying all this to say that um, when I did this, I said, Lord, I'm not going to just sit here and say, heal me from pre-diabetes while I continue to do my thing, Lord. No. That's not what I'm going to do. I told God that I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do my part, what I can do, but I need you to do a miracle for me. So my fast started January 9th and it was ending February 28th. So it was literally going to be, well, 50 days. So literally a month and a few days. And I'm saying, God, I want my blood sugar to be back to normal. Mind you, my blood sugar is like quarter to diabetes, right? Which means I have a long way to, even for me to get to pre-diabetes to this point, they told me in 2020, it's 20. 21. I'm starting my fast in 2022 in fact starting my fast in 2022 it took me two years to get to that point and I'm saying to God 
where I need a miracle, where I need you, is that in a month, in 50 days, you will reverse what took two years. But I said that what I'm going to do is I'm also going to do my part. So how I did my part is on January 10th, I stopped carbs. I stopped sugar. I did research on like what will help bring down your blood sugar. I stopped carbs. I stopped sugar. And then on January 24th, I started a workout program. So I started working out as well. Um, so that's what I did on a physical element. And then um, in terms of my fast, again, go watch my fasting video if you want more information about how I fast. But I did a standard 6 to 6 fast for 50 days. So from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., I don't eat anything. The only thing I do is drink water. Um, and then in the evenings, I would eat meat and vegetables and water. That's like all I would eat. Um, I didn't put any limitations like, you know, the, the food has to be boiled or anything. I, I ate what I wanted to eat, but it was meat, it was vegetables, and it was water. And guys, let me tell you, I finished my fast February 28th, I think, or 27th. On March 2nd of 2022, I went to the doctor and I said, I want to get my sugar tested. And when I got there, he was like, have you made your lifestyle changes? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, we can check for your sugar, but like, the reality is that you're probably still gonna be like pre-diabetic and stuff and he was like um you might incur extra charges because they were going to do the pricking thing or whatever and they were like normally they do that just for diabetes patients and i said i don't care charge me do the test and i do the test and let me tell you my blood sugar is back to normal i am no longer pre-diabetic i i am normal like exactly as I prayed for it to be is exactly what happened and my doctor was like bro what did you do he was like at the very most he expected for me he expected for my blood sugar to um you know maybe go down a bit but for me to get to the point of having regular normal blood sugar he was like that's crazy and I lost 15 k's he told me I lost 15 k's I don't I don't measure myself I don't weigh myself because I mean I don't like it I don't need that negative energy in my life I really don't please don't weigh myself but he told me he lost 15 and I was like who where who lost what who lost what when when 15 who me but I also want to acknowledge the power the miracle the grace of God because first of all, things happened exactly how I prayed for them to go. Exactly how I wrote it, exactly how I prayed for it, is exactly how it went. And even my doctor was like, how? How did you get back to this point so quickly? I've been pre-diabetic for like two years. And within a space of 50 days, my blood sugar was and is literally back to normal. My doctor gave me a complete clean bill of health like he was like you are good so I just really want to take time to thank God and I don't want to downplay this miracle this thing is one of the biggest things that I prayed for I prayed for a list of 18 things and this was the this was like you know even if nothing else on this list happened and that one thing happened I would have been satisfied so I just really want to take time to thank my heavenly father for divine healing when i was praying i relied a lot on james 5 15 and i relied a lot on mark uh 16 verse 17 to 18 and it's those verses that are like pray for the sick and the sick shall be healed lay your hand on the sick and the sick shall be healed so when i was praying i said that god i'm doing my part right and i need to do my part to be healthy doctors do their part or whatever but doctors are not healers you get me? They're maintainers, they're, they manage symptoms, they manage whatever, they try to get you whatever, but they're not healers. True healing comes from God. So I prayed for myself, I said, Lord, I'm laying my hand on myself and I am praying that by your stripes I am healed. That you said we should lay our hands on the sick and the sick shall be healed. I'm praying for myself and I know there's power in my prayers because you said when I ask, you will answer me in yes and amen. You said to me that seeking you shall find, knock on the door, the door will be opened, asking you shall receive. So that's what I'm doing. I'm standing upon your promises. You said you've given me the authority to trample over scorpions and serpents and 
you said that certain things can only be overcome through prayer and fasting. Jehovah, I'm standing on your word. Your word is sharper than a two-edged sword. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Therefore, the word has never failed. The word is not failing and the word will never fail. Those were the prayers that I was making and by his infinite grace, by his mercy, by his love, by his favor, I'm healed. And I really want to thank God and obviously going forward I'm going to maintain my health as well because God has done it for me and I don't want to disgrace him and dishonor myself by you know getting myself back to that point. So by the grace of God I'm going to try continue being active. I'm back to normal now so like I can eat carbs, sugar, not but still like now I live in moderation. It was a big wake up call for me. I was like Benita you don't take care of yourself. It was a really big wake up call. I was like a lot of us don't take care of ourselves. Whether it's we don't take care of our physical health. Like as a grown person why are you not exercising? Unless you have a reason you know sorry. Um, I know there are people who have medical reasons for not being able to exercise. I'm not I'm not counting you in this but um as a person who's able to exercise, why are you not exercising? And I'm not even saying go to, I'm not saying go to the gym. I'm saying go for a walk or whatever. Like, why are we not doing that? And when I say you, I'm also meaning me, okay? So when I'm holding you accountable, also me, I'm holding myself accountable. Why are we not exercising? Why are we not eating vegetables? Why are we not drinking water? Like, why are we not doing the stuff that we know we need to do? You know, and I know it's difficult, but we need to. And apart from physical health, what about mental health? Why are you not taking care of your mental health? Why are you not going to therapy when you need it? Why are you not being honest with yourself? Why are you not allowing yourself to cry? I want to talk a bit about how this fast has been for me. This fast was challenging. It was not easy at all. By the way, I'm never singing that I want to be tried by the fire song. I'm not singing it again. Even the Chandler's house sits on fire he himself when he sang that song. I prayed, Ooh, yeah, I don't know how to even ask God to test and try my relationships, remove me from places and whatever, and he did. You know, guys, now, the one prayer that 100%, let me tell you something, the one prayer that God is gonna answer, that he's gonna answer, and I feel like he answers it expeditiously. I feel like he answers this one very quickly. It's like this one prayer. That one, that one is okay. Bet all gates open. Do you know what prayer that is? Asking God to remove people from your lives. Hey! Enemies. Enemies of progress. Yes. I've got that. Oh, guys, please, 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 please. Don't make that prayer unless you are. You must be ready. You must be ready to gym with the big boys. Not even the big boys, because the big boys are probably going to leave your life. Bruh. It's funny, because I made the same prayer last year and it rocked me. Here I am making the same prayer again. Guess what? Rocked me again. I lost. I lost people. And um, it hurt. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. I felt so lonely. I felt so lonely. I felt like I was alone, like I had no one to talk to. I felt like it was, I was down bad. But it taught me two things. It taught me about number one, that when you ask God for things, ask him for the strength and the grace to receive it, to withstand it, to get through it. Because I asked God for a lot of things and the things that I'm asking for were like challenging things and I, and I never asked for the grace to take it. And that's the biggest lesson is when you ask, when you're praying for things, also ask for the strength and the grace to take what you're praying for. And number two, I learned that your worth must be in God, not in other relationships. I started feeling like the loneliness I was feeling and what and the rockiness I was like you know like I just I just felt like I didn't matter like I had you know when you feel like you have no one and that's why that song by Victor Thompson rocked me when it said where else will I go if not you and that's how I felt this fast isolated me heavily um, God, where else will I go if not you? I will go to you. 
and I cried to him, I prayed to him and he was my strength and he got me through. He was my friend, he was my confidant, he was my he was my everything and again my worth was found in him, not in relationships with other people, not, not in any any anyone or anything but him. And so I want to remind anyone who needs to hear it that your worth is in God and man in his eyes you're everything. You are so important. Of all the things he made, that this big earth, he felt that you needed to be here. He knows your worth. You are alive for a reason. To anyone who is thinking of killing themselves, who feels like, I'm not worthy, God hates me, he doesn't hate you, he loves you, and the devil is a liar. You're alive for a reason and your worth is found in him. For anyone who feels like you're lonely, this may sound cliche, but bro, you have God. You have God. And when you have him, it sounds cliche again, but you have everything. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to you. So I just want to, yeah, this video is getting really long. I'm really sorry. But I just want to end off this video by saying that God is real. And also, before I get to there, I want to say that God has answered so many of my prayers. Like, even things that were not on here. Things that I never even knew how I needed, he did for me. But things that I hear, he did for me. I am living the life that I've wanted to live. And there was a time when I said, how the heck am I going to get here? And I'm here now. And it is by the grace of God. God is real. I thank him. I love him. I serve him. Who am I without him? I'm nothing. All praise to the Most High God, the one who was, who is, and is to come, the one who never leaves, the one behind. The God of all creation, I am that I am, bigger than the biggest, higher than the highest, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, the Almighty God, El Shaddai, Adonai, Yahweh. El Roy, the God who sees me. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. Mm. You are the Lord Jehovah, that is your name. And you will never share your glory with anyone. And you are God, you are not a man. You cannot tell a lie. You are God, you are not a man. Jesus. If not to you, where else will I go? If not you, where else will I go? Oh Lord, there's no loneliness when you're there. Everyone who's feeling lonely, touch them, Lord. Let them feel your love and your light and your presence. Everyone who feels like they're stuck and I'm not going anywhere, my life is going nowhere. Jesus, show them your light and your hand. Help doesn't come from the north, east, south, or west. It comes from the Lord. I look up to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. My God who helps me does not sleep nor does he slumber. And I don't know how things are going to end for anyone. And I don't know how things are going to end for me. But I know that you are God. I may not know much. I don't know everything. And I cry still. And you know my weaknesses. But you are God. And you are my God. And you will see me through. And that is all the assurance I need in this life. Jesus name. Amen. Sorry guys. Didn't mean to do that and I'm also intentionally leaving this part in simply because it's real and I'm not going to even she cried on a video. How do you watch and edit and leave it in? It's about sincerity. 
you know, it's about sincerity. And I didn't mean to cry. And by the way, that was just a few tears. But um, yeah, I just want to thank God for my life and thank him for everything that he's done. I don't have the words and you guys don't understand and maybe someone out there does. God has done it for me. Okay, I'm no, I'm getting emotional. Ah, ah. Okay, I can't allow myself now to, to like actually proper cry. Relax. Relax. Oh, come on. Guys, God is good. <laughs> God is good and he did it for me and he'll do it for you. Whatever it is you're praying for. Um and I just want to I just wanted to do this video to give God the glory because I told him that when you do it for me, not if, when you do it for me, I will make a video and I'll praise your name publicly. I want to praise him. Because also, one thing about my relationship with God, every time I fast, I said this in my fasting video, I'm saying it again. Every time I fast, something happens. Mountains move. Miracles happen. Chains broken. Healing. Deliverance promotion everything every time I fast my life is never the same there's power in prayer and fasting so, thanks guys <laughs> that's it for today guys I hope you like this video don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and I'll be back with more videos peace and love guys bye <laughs>